Hello and welcome to Galaxy Advisors. The purpose of this video is to explain how to use the Condor New Twitter form, which is using the Twitter New API version 1.1. Uh, as of March 5th, uh, 2013, uh, Twitter changed their API. So they have a new one, Twitter API version 1.1, which now requires a Condor Twitter developer file called Twitter4j.properties, all of which I'm going to explain how to construct so that you can use the new Twitter API within Condor. The first and most important thing to start off with is download the new Condor, uh, Condor uh, zip file at uh, this link below. Um, below. It is also located under the show more file in the YouTube video. So all the links that you'll see here, you can just click show more at the YouTube um, video and you can get all the links without having to retype them in. Now once you've downloaded that and unzipped the file, condor-latest.zip, it'll be in a folder called condor-latest with the following files and folders. And you'll notice that there's a file at the bottom called twitter4j.properties. If you use a text edit program to open it, you'll see that it has four lines in there. Um, consumer key, consumer secret, and so on, in which there's no key. So part of this video is going to explain how to get those keys to fill it in so that you can have this Twitter form working for you. Now, for those who have used Condor Twitter form before, uh, let me just back up a little bit and explain what was the changes from the old form, the old Twitter form, to the new one. And there have been 10 changes. So let's go through these 10 changes and explain the difference. Uh, first and foremost, there's a new form only takes a single query. If you recall before, you could put in multiple queries separated by the comma. No longer. There's only no multiple terms can be separated by the comma uh, anymore in the new Twitter form. Uh, second, the old Twitter databases are not compatible with the new form and the new database structure. Thus, you need to create a new Twitter database and new data sets. Third, the option only collect retweets as communication has been disabled or grayed out because you would quickly reach the new rate limit. So we had to take that um, option away. As well as the next two. Uh, number four, there's really no longer have the option to collect tweets every nth minute. And five, no longer able to collect a Twitter followers. Again, that would just qu quickly deplete your um, and exceed your rate limit. So number six, you still have the ability to collect tweets by location or geocode for the latitude and longitude. Uh, seven, we've added a new language filter for English, German, and Spanish. Eight, we've added a new user's Twitter profile information to the chars table. So if a user has completed it and publicly available, um, you'll get all that um, Twitter's profile information saved. Otherwise, if they haven't um, completed it or have uh, set their security to not make it available in the database, you'll just see recorded as null. In number nine, we've added a field called URL entries to the com table to record the URLs in a tweet. So it makes it really easy to um, pick up the URLs. And finally, number 10, um, the new form requires four Twitter keys in the file Twitter4j properties, which again, we'll explain how to get. So if we kind of review looking at the form under the database now, you're going to have to create a new database uh, for your tweets, even though if you might have had an older one, it's no longer going to be able to be used. Um, you can still um, show that in the old one, but for the for adding things, you need a new database. The second thing, the new query is a single query entry. You can't put in multiple queries separate by the comma. So just remember that. Uh, finally, the only collect retweets is communication has been uh, disabled or grayed out. Language, now it's new. You have uh, three options. Uh, if you click on the drop down um, box, you'll see German as DE, English as EN, or Spanish as ES abbreviated. Uh, the options fetch user information is permanently set, so you're going to get all the Twitter user information if they've um, completed it and made it available, which for most people they do. Uh, geolocation, so it's the same. You add the latitude and longitude. And then finally, um, we've added the user information to the charge table and the URL entries into the com. Um, table. And again, um, the new form requires four Twitter keys and a new setup file, Twitter4j properties. So that pretty much summarizes the, the changes here. 
Now, just conceptually, uh, what's going on with this form? Really, the, the Twitter form constructs uh, the HTTP, uh, HTTP query and saves it into the MySQL database. Uh, for those um, geeks, if you will, that you say a normal Twitter query, you can actually construct at your um, browser window, such as this. If you put that in your browser window, it's a search on the, for Twitter API. You'll get kind of the normal Twitter window um, in the results. But if you change it slightly um, to search uh, to search.twitter.com and JSON question mark Q equals so on, um, you're going to get back a lot of the code back, and that's actually what's going on behind the scenes in the Twitter form that we're retrieving that information and then saving it into the MySQL form. It's a little background about actually how it's working behind the scenes. For more information you can see developer.twitter.com docs using search. So now let's let's get to the, the, the results of obtaining your Twitter authentication. Again you need to have the uh, file named Twitter 4J properties in the Condor folder and you're going to have these four lines in there as we've already previously discussed. Uh, to obtain the, um, the four Twitter authentication keys, go to https colon forward slash forward slash dev dot twitter dot com forward slash apps forward slash new. Again, these uh, links are all in the show more in the uh, YouTube video. So once you're there, uh, sign in with your Twitter account, put in your username, password, and click login. Uh, then you're going to be taken to the form. We want to create an application. So in name, um, put in something like my data fetcher and probably some number. It has to be unique. I've already taken my data fetcher two, so you can try at least three, four, five, or some other name that you want to find. But it has to be unique. Uh, description: You can put this as simply collects data to my own, uh, for my own analysis. Website. Uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.mysite.com that's fine call back URL just leave blank and click yes I agree and put in the uh, security uh, code there and then finally at the very bottom click create your Twitter application uh, next this is going to give you your consumer and your consumer secret keys I blocked it out here but it's going to be kind of a long uh, uh, number and then at the very bottom we need to create two more keys so click at the very bottom says click my access token to create the access token and token secret keys after you've done that go to the settings and here I've named my application my data fetcher 2 which means you can't use that number that name but um, if you click on the OAuth tool tab you're going to see the four keys that you're going to need to copy and paste into that um, file so uh, at that page, copy and paste the four keys one at a time to the Twitter4j.properties file and then save it. Now make sure this file is in the Condor folder. Uh, next, you could uh, click on log out, sign out here. And if you need to log back in uh, to create either another application, if you desire, just go back to the same URL and you can uh, repeat the steps. Now, start Condor. Uh, enter in your monthly key if you haven't already. Uh, click on Tools, Twitter Search, and you'll see it says New. And then again, uh, we're going to have to create a new database. So click Database, select New. The database window will open. Create new database window will open. I've entered iWire, uh, which is a cool new app to be for people to be citizen neuroscientists if you're interested in mapping the brain. Um, I recommend it. Uh, click OK and uh, enter a database name. Remember, no spaces or special characters, but an underscore is OK. Now, the next step is to complete the form options. Here, I've entered a query called iWire. I've set the results to 500. Uh, the degree of separation is fixed at 1. And then I've left everything else blank. Um, notice you could um, put a language option to say I only want to tweet that are either in German, English, or Spanish. Um, the default is no language selection. And if you're interested in putting a GF, geo fence around it, either in miles or kilometers, uh, I recommend using gpsvisualizer.com geocoder. We can just put in the name of the city or the location, and it will give you the latitude longitude, which you can copy and paste here in the form. And then click Start. 
after that, it goes out and gets the results. I've uh, included here the info that came back for this particular query. It, even though I set it at 500, it only found 255 tweets for the query iWire. Created the network, storing the tweet network in the database, and it tells you the network su successfully stored into the database. Now, it's not only just the tweets, but again, it's taking the user information and a number of other information, such as the number of retweets. And at the very end, you could add another, um, you could do another uh, query right now, or you can just click End. And then uh, the normal uh, visualization and condor, here's the tweets. Now, another uh, additional feature, you notice it says iWire parentheses 1. Uh, now, um, the search node has the data set ID number uh, in that. So if you repeated this or did something very similar, you can see what data set that node is fixed to. Uh, for Twitter and MySQL tables, if you use Navicat in this case, I'm looking at the iWire new database. And if I clicked on the charts table, you're going to see a number of new um, fields uh, within that uh, data structure. Especially, it's going to give you the favorite count, friends count, status count, follower count, listed count. You might want to search or highlight in your visualization the um, users by a follower count. Um, and in the com table, uh, again, you have the com the tweet under com content, but you also have now an entry called URL entries in retweet count. So Condor is actually collecting that information as well this time and storing it in these two MySQL tables. Again, a note that Twitter rate limits for uh, version 1.1. The rate limits in this current version 1.1 of the APR divided into 15-minute intervals, which is a change from the 60-minute blocks in version 1. Now the search will be rate limited at 180 queries per 15 minute window for the time being. Of course, it's always subject to change. And you can see this URL for more information about the rate limiting. If you do hit the rate limit, it looks like this. This is the error um, that you'll receive if you hit the um, rate limit um, uh, limit. And my advice is just wait 15 minutes and try again. So that's the new uh, Twitter uh, form that changes from the old to new. I hope you enjoy your Twitter searches, and welcome to um, Galaxy Advisors.